Welcome to Conarium. This is a game based on the movie, which is a sequel to Con Air, starring Nicolas Cage. It's... <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, this is a, a sort of horror adventure game that's based around H.P. Lovecraft. I think at the Mountains of Madness, specifically. Um, I haven't actually read H.P. Lovecraft, mind you, so can't offer much insight into that. But it looked really interesting, looked beautiful, and, you know, some horror, some adventuring that's right on my alley, so let's jump right into it. All life is only a set of pictures in the brain, among which there is no difference betwixt those born of real things and those born of inward dreamings. things that cannot be undone. Dr. Faust, is that you? subsiding. I thought my head was about to explode. Okay, now I've got a source of light. I played for just a couple minutes in this beginning room just to get familiar with the controls. This device, its noises are resonating in my mind. It looks similar to the thing we saw in that vision that that person was standing in front of. Yeah, this game really is gorgeous. And we've got this strange device. Yeah, if I remember right. Controls are a little bit strange in that the spacebar doesn't jump, but instead opens up the inventory. Uh, this strange device was already on my left arm when I came around inside the meeting room of the Upwat Antarctic base. It comes as no surprise that I don't remember anything about it. You know, what the heck is it? Oh, no detailed description for the <laughs> for the flashlight. So I could bring it up, but I can't seem to do anything with it. It's got a gauge thing on it that's moving. Don't know what it's moving for though. Maybe it's just a fancy wristwatch. Mm-hmm. So we're in 1949, observation notes of the fourth initiation session, 
7.05 p.m. All the participants consumed the Dervis de Hay mixture five minutes ago, and they have entered some kind of altered state of consciousness. All of them are now vaguely mumbling in their sleep like they're chanting something, but the sounds are not conscious. They seem restless. I detect movements in their limbs, and as always, I wonder if it is because of something they are actually seeing beyond. 7.15 as always, the device is humming and glowing, but this time the atmosphere is different to the previous sessions. Whatever the reason for this might be, it feels almost like that fantastic device is signaling something in a code I don't recognize. It is becoming more and more stressful to be alone here, in the midst of this cold, dim, and incense-filled room. 719. Sounds to me like the intensity of the subject's mumbling, mumblings is much stronger now. Colors and shades are dancing on the walls with the rhythmic ins and outs of the device. I can hear the wind howling outside. Maybe a snowstorm is approaching. Or something even worse. 724. Exactly five minutes and three seconds have passed now. They have drifted beyond my area of expertise and guidance. I cannot do anything further except wish for their safe return. Oh, whoa, I just realized where I put my mouse uh, guides around the flashlight on the page. Huh. That's so cool. Well, it sounds like um, I probably consumed the Diversahay mixture. I'm probably totally not pronouncing that right. Altered state of consciousness. Check. We you have that vision. Hmm... Hmm. Are we still having some sort of a vision, or... No, I mean, I guess I've woken up, but I perhaps have woken up in a different... I don't know, <laughs> dimension. But yeah, these are definitely, like, a session room. You can see these four kind of lounging chairs all centered around this device. Don't know what that is, but it looks disgusting. Upu out expedition handbook. Probably also not pronouncing that right. Ah, drawers. Oop, meant to crouch. Oh, I can't take it with me. I keep... <laughs> I keep pressing C to crouch and ungrouch, because I'm so used to that from the other games I'm playing at the moment. But it's control to crouch. Oh, is this supplying the power to the thing? Yeah, it looks like it. So how is this all connected? I see there's speakers. Each of these speakers is connected to one of these boxes. And then the boxes are connected both to that over there and to this device. Diverse, eh? Nightshade and... Beyond, or night side and beyond. Looks like some sort of a plant. Sahya tea plant. Seeds of something. Maybe how to make the mixture. I also keep pressing F to try to interact with things, even though that just turns on and off the flashlight. This game's really good looking. Hello? Anybody here? Where is everybody?
that's somehow associated with the base, because I saw it on... Yeah, it's like the emblem of the base, it looks like. It's on the doors and stuff. Okay, that looks like some sort of Cthulhu chamber. Familiar visits the... Familiar visits the lower chambers once more in, a for, in the form of a black cat. Its spectral image echoes throughout the seven rooms. What sin called it out from his hollow looming dim and ghost-like? Huh? Weather notice. Nikolai Hansen. Expected snowstorm. Strong snowstorm is expected to hit for the next two weeks. It is in utmost importance to take all the cautionary measures and inform the responsible personnel when going outside. Please be aware that the radio connection between the base and the ship may not be available during this period. Did everybody leave me here to die? What was that? Oh, I think I was walking on water. Ground's all wet, making squishy noises. Locked. Hmm, looks like we're having a power problem right now. Journal's been updated. No electricity. I found that the oop water. Antarctic Expedition Base has been enveloped in darkness and some of the appliances are not functioning due to the power outage, but why has no one attended to the problem so far? Where is everybody? Locked. Elevator, infirmary, storage room. There's an elevator? Multiple floors. Fancy. Ah! Help me get the power up. Is this a puzzle? Auxiliary power needs to be enabled manually from outside. Oh. Well, I'll probably have to do something with this at some point, but not just yet. Because I need to go outside first. In a snowstorm. Stop those bloody sessions. John DeWitt? Supervisor John DeWitt. Attention for the crew members who are having sleeping problems. Examinations conducted regarding the increase of the accidents recently happening led me, led me to believe that the reason behind those is some kind of intense cabin fever. Symptoms for this problem are insomnia, strong headaches, seeing visions, and hearing voices. Okay, well, strong headaches and seeing visions. Check, check. We just had those. Crew members who suffer from the above symptoms are needed to refer to me personally for a thorough checkup. This will also be the main topic of the general meeting that will be held tomorrow after lunch. This issue poses serious problems regarding the safety of life and sustenance of work, so must be taken head of soberly. Medical practitioner. Oh, same weather notice. Journal's updated. I'd better find a crew member. Woke up from a series of blurry nightmares isolated inside these somewhat foreign walls. In one of my pockets, I found an empty notebook in which I'm writing my notes. I can't remember anything other than there should have been others here with me. The names Dr. Faust and Dr. DeWitt are lingering in my mind now. Additionally, trying to delve deeper into thoughts gives me sharp pains in my already throbbing head. I'd better find a crew member and find out what's going on here as soon as possible. That looks like it goes outside.
Oh boy. I wonder if there's any sort of a like freezing mechanic. I wonder if I have to worry about my temperature. My mind is cloudy. All I can remember is the successful establishment of the Upperwater Antarctic base. And after that, nothing is clear in my mind. Upperwater. So that's how you pronounce it. Upperwater. Thingies. That was promising. Ah. Oh, it looks like an emergency generator or something. Some fuel for it. Hello. Oh, Christ, it's so, um, it's so bright. Uh. Is this open? Oh, just use the key. Well, kind of hitting the references on the head there, huh? The Mountains of Madness. Ah, it's a trophy. There's collectibles. I use the tape to do a thing. Probably need a fill of gas. Way of power. Yeah, all right. Let's see what's over here before I go back. Is that a door? These look like they should be doors, but no handles or anything. There's gotta be more stuff around here. It's easy to get lost in this weather. I'd better stay close to the expedition base. Yeah, true.
So do I need to do something with this now? Or are we all good? Uh. Oh. What was that? I see some lights on on the ground, so yeah, I, I guess the power's on. Let's go investigate. Crew quarters? Wasn't it? Nikolai Gogol, the portrait. If his coat is just right here, where is he now? It's locked. Locked. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Too many for the physics engine to handle. Locked. It's locked. If his coat is just right here, where is he now? It's got a little Morse code guide on it. Can I use it or something? Standard walkie talkie. Uh, CDUs? This is Frank Gilman. Can anybody hear me? Over. They may be out of reach. Crew rooms or private rooms? Yeah, that thing here talked about incense, right? I'm not sure where it said it, but I'm pretty sure it mentioned something about incense being thick in the air. Oh, there it was. In the midst of this cold, dim, and incense-filled room. That's how this all feels. It looks so, just, smoky. Like incense. Hmm. Locked. Hidden plants of great antiquity. It's stuck. Yeah. Whoops. Oh. Apparently, that's a trophy item, anyway. Well, if it's a trophy, probably there's probably no point in reading it. Oh, I see you. Look at that. Today we located the plant, Saheti, with a demonic precision under Doctor Faust's guidance. My God, how could a face be so deformed at the moment of victory? His pitch black eyes were shimmering in the blinding darkness of the pre-human catacomb. Just try to imagine that. In that forbidding and suffocating oldness, he screamed aloud phrases I believe to have originated from the notorious Necronomicon written by the Mad Arab in the 700s AD. It was really too much for our nerves. All of the events were like a stage play, successfully directed and performed by one person alone. No one spoke aloud, but it was apparent from the countenance they wore. Everybody was agreed upon the abnormal nature of the knowledge we were shown in that moment. And about the Seti, it's too early to write anything. I'll spend the coming days working on it, then I will note down my conclusions.
the hell is this about? Generated voices outputted to speakers. Incoming power needs to be regulated. Auditory and visual data are fed to the main system by the primary filters. Is it really possible to feed the machine with an actual brain? Anci ancient sources speak too secretively about this. Based on the writings of R. Bacon and Wolfgang von Kempelen, I will try to improve the machine. Yeah, that definitely looks like the machine that's in the testing rooms for the sessions. If you look at the very top picture, that bigger one looks like what the power is connected to, and then you see a couple speakers. What's this generated voice, though? I don't know what this is. Something about eyes. Is that light from behind an eyeball? On the top right, shows light coming in from what looks like behind the eyeball, but I'm not sure. After a haphazard and momentary aerial exploration of the unholy, utterly alien cyclopean maze of square, curved, and angled blocks, we could detect most of the locations revealed by the previous Miskatonic University expedition leader, the Professor Emeritus William Dyer. But what we are looking for is not there, inside the haunted Shagoth ruins. According to various sources, it should be in the much older ruins beyond the Elder City, right on the edge of a mountain beyond the Mountains of Madness. It was built over a location deeply shunned even by the Elder Things, and built long before the Colossal City Dr. Dyer and his team explored. Hey, Dr. Dyer, that's me. Now we set foot upon lands no one has ever seen before. A vast mass of dry land around the South Pole which rose from the primal waters when the Old Ones seeped down from the stars. A place so evil, most of the arcane sources hesitated to record it at all, whilst some murals within the Elder City depicted it with obvious repugnance and trepidation. That's H.P. Lovecraft, alright. I mean, I haven't really read H.P. Lovecraft, but I'm familiar with it enough to know that that's the kind of the, uh, the writing style. Ooh. It's ah, stuck. Still stuck. Huh. So, one knob and a slider. I'll mess with that later. Ooh. Can that be used to open it? It won't open. Nah, it says it looks like a handle. There's nowhere to put it here. I know we're close to what we've been looking for. During the adaptation sessions we hold here in the meeting room, I feel a guidance of some sort. Something pointing towards the, desti the destination we seek. This could mean we are now in sync with the ancient source. The wearable carnarium we're carrying on our left arms connects and thus receives sensations from the same ancient source. And sometimes, I wonder whether there, whether there has ever been another soul during humanity's relatively brief period of existence who was able to achieve such a feat. Within some shunned and elusive sources I have gathered from around the world, it is said that the extraterrestrial species, the Elder Thing race, built it after passing through a stage of mechanized life on other planets, but its purpose remains unclear. So that's what we've got on our arm, a wearable canarium. Just receive sensations from the same ancient source, whatever that means. I guess I'll mess with this right now for a little bit. So, it's messing with the... Um, I'm not sure if this is a sine wave or a different type of wave, but it's messing with it. Making it faster or shorter, and this is 
loses. Oh, that also affects the speed. I'll know what to do with that at some point. Oh, second flashlight. Did I lock my door? I don't remember where my keys are. Oh, that's me, Frank Gilman. Locked. Covered in blood? It looks like blood. These nightmares have become unbearable. I still see the same man in my no nocturnal visions, but now he is holding something in his hand, which I believe to be a lotus flower. We seem to be continuing this grave and serious conversation again and again, but I still can't remember the contents. During working hours, sometimes, I hear his voice through the radio. It is not in a form of meaningful sentences, but more like some unconscious mutterings. I'm afraid to tell anyone about this, for I hate the very idea of the suspension I'll probably be facing. What's that? God, that's creepy. One of the composite sculptures we would come across during our initial field trips was an open third eye on its forehead, or it has an open third eye on its forehead, as well as inside its hand, which I think indicates some kind of state of knowing because allusions to knowledge and elder things recur all the time in almost every... I don't actually know how that's meant to be pronounced. Boss relief? Base relief? We have discovered so far. All this leads me to believe these creatures inhabiting those halls have acquired some kind of knowledge from the Elder Things. Fabled creatures of primal myths. Several other examples of the composite sculptures ranging from humanoid to reptilian in shape. They were mostly damaged and generally in a really bad shape. The lost parts were completed by the artist's imagination. The abundance of five-pointed shapes seen in the design of the structures we've come across cannot be overlooked. In addition, most of the elegant figures adorning and staring silently from above, most of the gigantic gateways, are reptilian in shape. This grotesque masonry caused an uproar with the countenance it wore on its reptilian face when we first found it residing within the almost substantial darkness of the cave where it has been carved in eons past. Some of the crew even claimed that they had heard some muffled laughing sounds coming from within it. The pine cone it was guarding or hiding with its humanoid hand has some symbols carved into it which we are yet to decipher. They must be these.
What the heck is that? Uh-huh, another hidden note. As far as my knowledge permits, I can say that this plant has been residing in the darkest recesses of ancient myths for a considerably long time. It is believed by some authorities on the subject that this plant, amongst others, was used by the antediluvian mushroom cults of the Sahara. There are also some references to it in the elusive book Katab al Kanuz. Some medieval alchemists refer to it as a mirage of an oasis. Scholars of esotericism witness it on their voyages in the hottest deserts of the occult. Some influential individuals of the aforementioned arts claim that they have found it during their respective times, but nothing was brought into daylight afterwards. So we have nothing on our hands other than some vague illusions and beguiling remarks made by some shamanic guides and scholars of the ancient arts alike. What is that? It's the color of the carpet. Hmm? Johan de Witt. I am inclined more towards the notion that our nocturnal visions are not just faint and fantastic reflections of our waking experiences. Every time I pass into a state of dormancy, somehow, I can explore while I am dreaming the vistas of grandeur, an alien prospect, an unnatural disposition, so vividly expressing the outer extent of this world I have yet to discover. If only I was endowed with the artistic skill to describe my visions. All I know is that all this became evident after the Canarium sessions had started. Even though I am not one of the participants, I am somehow affected. I feel I am absorbed, while in an unconscious state, into the oblivion, crossing the line beyond the wall of sleep. It's locked. Okay, was there a locked door over here I can use it on? Do it. Locked. I wonder where DeWitt's place would be. It wasn't here, right? No, I just tried this. Okay. Must be somewhere else. Some special place, perhaps they were at the captain or something. But then again, their locker's right here. Oh, it's not to their room, it's to their locker. If his coat is just right here, where is he now? Yes, yes. I found a note about a mental problem. Y yes. <laughs> I've noticed a very curious and dangerous development in the psychological condition of the whole crew that compels me to record this note as an initial diagnosis report. The problem is especially intense for three subjects. Dr. Barlow, Dr. Anderson, and Frank Gilman, whom I have been inspecting closely since the onset of their psychological degradation. During the past two nights, the aforementioned subjects awoke, screaming in their beds, thus affecting and demoralizing all the crew members. 
When I spoke to them personally, I noticed some serious deviations in their behavior patterns. As time progressed, I noted deep changes in their mental conditions. When really pushed, they clearly started to behave like someone else, which led me to believe I was facing some sort of multiple personality disorder, but it is too early to draw any conclusions. Other subjects are not too far a cry from their normal personalities, but the difference is, of course, obvious. Their condition is getting worse day by day, and a serious medical examination is needed to be carried out on everybody displaying such symptoms. I informed Dr. Faust and warned him about the consequences. He looked worried, but nevertheless hasn't mentioned it to me since. With the weather conditions we have been having lately, it seems extremely unlikely that we shall receive professional help from the outside world or we'll be able to send anybody away for a thorough medical examination, which is the only sane thing to do under the circumstances. Okay, that... This goes outside, right? Oh, no? No, elevator, infirmary, storage rooms. Okay. Let's leave that for a second. Ah, radio room can now be accessed. Okay. That goes outside. Alright, so radio room and the other places we have access to now. Check out the radio room. Gorgeous. For a while, my nights have been plagued by bizarre nightmares wherein I have been talking to an unsubstantial figure. When I wake up every morning, I fail to remember either his visage or the content of the dialogue, only his silhouette. Talking in a somber tone, these nightmares keep me from sleeping comfortably, the kind of sleep I am longing for. I haven't mentioned this to anybody yet, but I am feeling a constant urge to do so, as if my well-being is in the balance. It would be most logical to consult with Dr. DeWitt about this. Oh. Is this multiple pages of the same journal? Yes. I hope I haven't missed pages on other stuff. Okay. So this is how far apart? Let's see. Exactly one month? Yeah. These nightmares have become unbearable. I Actually, wait, 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 wait. One month? Or one day? <gasps> What's the date format? I don't know. If it's a sensible format, then it's one day. If it's the US format, like what I'm used to, then it's a month. These nightmares have become unbearable. I still see the same man in my nocturnal visions, but now he's holding something in his hand, which I believe to be a lotus flower. Wait, haven't I read this? I have read that. I guess I just found journal number two somewhere. And now I just found number one. <laughs> oh, I am so gonna have to decode some Morse code. <laughs> Thank you for the text interpretation of Morse code. Date of Storm, 1950. 1950? Haven't all the journal entries been from 1949? And, like, quite a bit from 1950. Regar regardless of which date format, it's at least f uh, five months away from 1950. 
Okay, it's day month year, because this one's 23. There's no 23rd month. I'm a genius, I figured it out. Yeah, so these are all from quite a long time ago compared to this storm warning. Yeah. 1950. So we are where on this? Not sure. Maybe we're not on it at all. This is Upuat Expedition Base. Pequod, please come in. I repeat, this is Upuat Expedition Base. Pequod, do you hear me? There is someone who can hear me. Please, come in. Some electrical condition in the disturbed air seems to prevent communication. Can't seem to fiddle with anything, so I don't think there's anything I can do with it just yet. Some electrical condition in the disturbed air seems to prevent communication. Ooh, look at that shadow. What's that coming from? Ah, oh, there's a fan up there. Okay, well, I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when I return, I'm going to go explore the elevator slash infirmary slash storage rooms.